Hello and welcome to Anton's Mindstorms. This is a tutorial in which I will show you how to find the minimum value in a series of value. We will also look at the minimum absolute value in that series. To uh, find this value we will use the array variable which is um, a very advanced uh, type of uh, variable that is not often used in programs. So um, let's see here numeric array. Let's create a new one. We'll just call it values and it will contain the list of values that we're going to compare. We will go to compare the values in a loop and um, for now let's input some values here so for instance minus 50 8 just making some values up and 200 200 okay so these are now my values in the array and now I will loop over those values and find the minimum one. First, we will um, start by reading the first value into a, a variable that we'll call a minimum for now, minimum. And we will keep comparing new values and then updating this minimum value. So. Let's start by putting the first value of the array in there. Now we're going to read the array. Read the array. And uh, we're using an, an array operation to read at index. So we are going to read the value at index 0. Basically the first value in the array and we're going to put it into the minimum value. Okay, next we are going to loop over the array. So this means we're going to read the array again, read the numeric array, and with the same array operation, we're not going to read the whole array, but only at a certain index. And here there is a loop counter, and we can use that to read the array at the index of the loop we're in. So if we're in the first loop, it will read the first uh, array item. And um, the same array. So, and we only have to loop over all the values as long as the array is. So right here, um, we're going to use another array operation and we're going to read the length of the array. Okay, let's input the length in there. And, the, oh, and I have to make this one count. Okay, so now we have created a loop over the length of the array, reading every value in the array. Um, in the end, we will find the minimum value but for now, let's see if um, the values show up um, after we read them, okay? So we will just override this variable with every value in the array. I'll put a little pause here, one second, and run the program. And because of the pause and um, by keeping the mouse pointer over the wire, you probably, uh, let's do it again, you probably have seen the different values, minus 58, 30, 200, which are exactly the values that I chose here at the beginning to input into the array. This means this loops, this loop works perfectly. It loops over the array and reads every value of the array in turn. Okay, now we are going to do something smarter with the values. Um, let's reduce the size here. Okay. Um, we're not just going to override the value. No, we are going to compare it. 
so let's put a comparison here um, and we are going to compare the value at a certain index and we will see if it's less than the value that we have currently in the variable minimum so we're going to read the minimum and put it in the same comparison what we have here now is a comparison block that compares the last minimum that we found with the current value that we are reading from the array and this comparison block is boolean so it goes true or false here on the output now we want to do something with that output and we will put that into an if module it defaults to um, the touch bar but let's put it into logic mode so we can wire it into the output of the comparison block now if we found a new minimum so the value that we read in the array is smaller than the current minimum in that case we are only in that case we are going to overwrite it the new minimum we found so this we're going to write into that variable with the value from the array now let's see if that worked by um, reading the minimum value here again I don't know, let's display it on the screen. Put it into wired mode. Uh, oh, I should have first have put it into text mode and then into wired mode. Okay. Now I can show the variable on the screen. This will go very fast, so I have to add a weight. Where did that one go? I have to add a weight block of a few seconds. Then you will be able to see the result. Um, okay. Let's see how that works. Now, okay, so first we are reading the, the values and okay. Ooh, that was too fast. Let's do that again. So let's see how minimum evolves from minus 50. Never changes anymore. Yeah. So apparently minus 50 is my lowest number. Let's see if from the input that is right. Yes, in this um, array of values, minus 50 was the lowest number. So let's try and see if we change the last one to minus 200. So now the result should be minus 200. Um, and why don't I put an increasing or a decreasing um, number? Okay, so if I do it like this, you will more you will see the minimum variable change more okay so let's see here minimum reads 50 then it reads minus 8 minus 30 minus 200 is the minimum we found so right here we have a system of finding the minimum in a series of values um, if we want to turn this into a my block however it's uh, hard to wire uh, my block inputs into this so we are going to build the values array in a wireable way and we are going to do it like this with um, array operations so to get the same array 50 minus 8 minus 30 200 we're going to build it up with different array operations block the first one is going to write at index a numeric value so we're going to write in the first in an empty array in the first index we're going to write the number uh, what was it 50 okay the result of that we are going to put into a new array operation 
and we are going to append a number there. The second number was minus 8. We are going to put that into a new array operation. Okay. Append. We are going to add minus 30 now. And then we are going to append our last value, which was minus 200. Oh, I should have put it in append. So I first write minus 50, the result I append minus 8 to that, I append minus 30 to that, and here I append minus 200 to that. And the result I store here into the numeric into the numeric array. Oh, I should have chosen right. Okay. And if all's well, and I run this program, I should have the same result. Let's see how minimum changes from 50 to minus 8, to minus 30, and the end result here, minus 200. It's also showing on the screen, but that's not in the screencast. Okay, now from here on, we can make a my block. Um, and let's call this my block minimum of four. So let's turn this into a my block. My block builder. We'll call it min four. On this one, we will have four inputs and one output, like so. The inputs um, can be letters. Why not? Output. Um, what is a nice icon for minimum? Okay, this one smaller. And yes, the brainy icon there is okay. Let's finish the my block. Okay. Um, now we have these numbers here from the parameters, and um, we can drag every number now because we built up this um, values array we can drag every number in a position of the array and then we'll scroll down to the output ah, and already automatically my output was connected so now let's see my program here, um, EV3G um, like replaced my block, all of my blocks with this new my block and um, if all's well we should still have the same functionality here. So let's try some random numbers, 20, 30, minus 40, um, 10. Okay, scroll over here, let's see what happens, um, it'll probably take 4 seconds because I was waiting, minus 40, okay, so the my block still works, um, it's a slow my block because I put the wait block in here, I can just remove that. Um, what I'm going to do here is um, do undo a couple of times until I have my complete program back. Um, this gives me my complete program back, but it keeps the my block that I put here, it keeps that one intact. So if at some stage 
I want to create a minimum of two numbers. Um, I'll save my project for a bit, by the way. Um, I can come back here, just delete those extra numbers. Okay, reconnect it. So again and create a new buy block and we will call this one minimum of two. We will have two inputs and one output. We will call this one input B and we will call output. We'll choose the minimum icon again. Okay finish right now if we connect this one here and this one there we have created a my block that finds us the minimum of two numbers and again we can try it here so this is 100 and this is 50 Let's run it again. Oops. The, oh yeah. Okay. So this my block here reports 50 as a minimum number. Again, I think I left in the weight block. Yes. So that's why it took two seconds to calculate that minimum. It should be more or less instantaneous if I want. Okay. So um, let's put. Let's do undo again. I want my whole program back. The whole point of this exercise was actually that I wanted the minimum absolute value in a series of three numbers. So since I wanted three numbers, I'm going to um, add one more step here again. Array operation, append numeric um, here there now I have a series of three numbers and what I want to do is compare their absolute values so to compare the absolute values we of course need to be able to calculate them lucky for us there is a math block that does exactly such thing so let's scroll over here where the comparison is and we are going to insert two math blocks to calculate absolute values so first we are going to calculate the absolute value of the, of the value read from the array and then we are also going to calculate the absolute value of the value that we last selected as a minimum. Okay, absolute value. With these absolute values calculated, we do the comparison again. Right here in a series of say 100 um, minus 100, or say, yeah, minus 100 and minus 5. I want to find the minus 5, the number that is closest to 0, while the minimum here would be minus 100. Let's see if my program has worked. And voila, we are finding the minimum absolute value. So I'm going to turn this into another my block for, uh, and it will be the basis for an other tutorial on acceleration and deceleration so there we go the last few steps min absolute value of three The 
Icon is a little hard. Is there an absolute value icon? So, because it's going to be min absolute value. And let's finish this my block and drag in all of the numbers. Okay, so right now we have created here a my block that gives us in a series of numbers that can be large. 50 minus 200 and 8 this program will always return the number that is closest to 0 so in this case I want to see an 8 here and I see an 8 okay that concludes the tutorial for finding a minimum value and a minimum absolute value bye bye